If you're preparing to take the CDL written test and advancing your career as a CDL driver the best way to prepare for the exam is to go through the 150 questions in this video twice and then take a practice test on our website at www.100dmv.com with the same questions. After you clear the exam, come back here and leave a comment with your experience to help others know what worked for you. 1. Which of these is a good thing to remember about drinking alcohol? A. The driver can control how fast the body gets rid of alcohol. B. Small quantities of alcohol increase the reaction time. C. Alcohol affects judgment and self-control, which are necessary for safe driving. The correct answer is, C. Alcohol affects judgment and self-control, which are necessary for safe driving. 2. As the blood alcohol concentration, BAC, goes up. What happens? A. Judgment and self-control are affected. B. The effects of alcohol decrease. C. The drinker more clearly sees how alcohol is affecting him or her. The correct answer is, judgment and self-control are affected. 3. When a doctor prescribes medication for you and you know you will be driving, you should, A. Take the medication but stop taking it if you notice that it is affecting your driving. B. Take the medication, but also take medication to keep you alert. C. Ask the doctor if the medication will affect your driving. Correct answer is C. Ask the doctor if the medication will affect your driving. 4. Medicines used to treat the common cold, A. Can still be used while driving if you can take only half the dose. B. Should be only used when driving in the daytime. C. Often makes you drowsy and thus should not be used while driving. Correct answer is, C. That it often makes you drowsy and you should not be using it while driving. 5. Which of these statements about drugs is true? A. Driver can use any prescription drug while driving. B. Use of drugs can lead to accidents and arrest. C. Certain prescription drugs are allowed to reduce fatigue. Correct answer is, B. Use of drugs can lead to accidents or arrest. 6. If you have been drinking alcohol, you should wait for it to wear off. B. Drink coffee. C. Take a cold shower. Correct answer is, you should wait for it to wear off before driving. 7. Implied consent means, A. It is understood that you may drink alcohol now and then. B. You have given your consent to be tested for alcohol in your blood. C. You have given your consent to the inspection of your vehicle for alcohol. The correct answer is, B. You have given your consent to be tested for alcohol in your blood. 8. To determine the blood alcohol concentration, BAC, of a person, it is necessary to know what? A. How often the person drinks. B. How much the person weighs. Correct answer is, B. How much the person weighs. 9. Which of these statements about an inspection or suspension components is true? A. Distorted coil springs are safe as long as they are not broken. B. Actual amounts should be checked at each point where they are secured on the vehicle frame and axles. C. Suspension components should be checked on all axles except for the power unit. Correct answer is, B, the actual amounts should be checked at each point where they are secured on the vehicle frame and axles. 10. Should brake adjustment be checked often? A, yes, because brakes can get out of adjustment when they are used a lot. B, it depends on how new the brakes are. C, no, because the other brakes will make up for a brake that is out of adjustment. Correct answer is, yes because brakes can get out of adjustment when they are used a lot. 11. Which of these is not part of a pre-trip inspection of the engine compartment? A. Engine oil level. B. Valve clearance. C. Electrical wiring insulation. Correct answer is, B. Valve clearance. 12. You are checking your brakes and suspension in a pre-trip inspection. Which of these statements is true? A. Just one missing leaf. Spring is not dangerous. B. Spring hangers that are cracked are not dangerous. 
See, brake shoes should not have oil, grease, or fluid on them. Correct answer is, C. The brake shoes should not have oil, grease, or fluid on them. 13. Which of these items is not checked in the pre-trip inspection? A. All the lights are working and clean. B. Cargo secure. C. Amount of fuel in the vehicle. Correct answer is, C. Amount of fuel in the vehicle. 14. What is the most important reason to inspect your truck or bus? A. Safety. B. It's the law. C. To avoid being cited. Correct answer is, A. For safety. 15. Which of these is not a brake check you normally do during the walk-around inspection? A. Brake adjustment. B. Condition of hoses. C. Hydraulic cylinder leaks. Correct answer is, C. Hydraulic cylinder leaks. 16. Which of these is true about a mirror adjustment? A. You should adjust your mirrors prior to starting a trip. B. You can adjust your mirrors while driving. C. The mirrors can adjust it correctly even if the trailer is not straight. The correct answer is, A. You should adjust your mirrors prior to starting a trip. 17. If you have a heavy load that is showing you down on an upgrade, you share a shift into a lower gear. A. A shift into a lower gear. B. Exit the road until the traffic is lighter. C. Drives on the shoulder so the others can pass easily. Correct answer is, A. Shifts into a lower gear. 18. If possible, a helper should be used to help back your vehicle, A. Only when your vehicle is pulling a trailer. B. Only when your vehicle has to back on a curved path. C. Whenever you have to back. Correct answer is, C. Whenever you have to back. 19. Which of these statements about downshifting is true? A. When you downshift for a curve, you should do so before you enter the curve. B. When double watching, you should let the RPMs decrease while the clutch is released and the truck is in neutral. C. When you downshifting for a curve, you should do so after you enter the curve. Correct answer is, when you downshift for a curve, you should do so before you enter the curve. 20. Backing a commercial vehicle, A. It is always dangerous. B. It is not dangerous if you have a helper. C. It is not dangerous if you do not have to turn. Correct answer is, A. It is always dangerous. 21. When driving at night, you should use a low beam when oncoming vehicle within, A, 300 feet. B, 400 feet. C, 500 feet. Correct answer is, C, 500 feet. 23. How far ahead of the vehicle should the driver look while driving? A, 5 to 8 seconds. B, 12 to 15 seconds. C, 2 to 5 seconds. The correct answer is, C, 12 to 15 seconds. 24. Perception distance is the distance your vehicle travels from the time, A, the eye see a hazard to the time the foot hits the brake pedal. B, the brain tells the foot to push the brake pedal to the time the foot responds. C, the eyes see a hazard to the time the brain knows it's a hazard. Correct answer is, C, the eyes see a hazard to the time the brain knows it's a hazard. 25. You are driving in an area with few streetlights on a clear night. If you cannot see well with your headlights, which of these actions would help? A. Turn your interior light on and adjust your instruments to light up. B. Find another route that is better lit, even if it is out of the way. C. Use your high beams when legal and keep your interior lights off. The correct answer is, C. Use your high beams when legal and keep your interior light off. 26. Which of these is a good thing to do when driving at night? A. Keep your speed low enough that you can stop in the range of your headlights. B. Look directly at oncoming lights only briefly. C. Keep your instrument panel lights bright. Correct answer is, A. To keep your speed low enough that you can stop in the range of your headlights. 27. If you do not have a CB radio, what is the first thing you should do at an accidental thing? A. Protect the area. 
b. Notify the authorities. c. Care for the injured. Correct answer is, you should protect the area. 28. If your brakes fail on a downgrade, you must first look outside your vehicle for another means of slowing it. b. Hit some object in order to stop your vehicle. c. Wait until you find an escape ramp to exit the roadway. Correct answer is, you should look outside your vehicle for another means to slow it. 29. When hydraulic brakes fail while driving, what action should you take? a. Push down the brake pedal as hard as you can. b. Pump the brake pedal to generate pressure. c. Put the vehicle in neutral and set the parking brake. Correct answer is, b. You should pump the brake pedal to generate pressure. 30. Your vehicle has hydraulic brakes. While traveling on a level road, you press the pedal and it goes to the floor. Which of these statements is true? A. The parking brake will not work either because it is part of the same system. B. Pumping the brake pedal may bring pressure up so you can stop the vehicle. C. Shifting into neutral will help slow the vehicle. Correct answer is, B. Pumping the brake pedal may bring pressure up so you can stop the vehicle. 31. What does emergency braking mean? A. Pushing down on the brake pedal as hard as you can. B. Responding to a hazard by slowing the vehicle. C. Use the vehicle's emergency brake. Correct answer is, B. Responding to a hazard by slowing the vehicle. 32. You are driving a new truck with a manual transmission. What gear will you need to take a long downhill grade? A. The same gear you use to climb the hill. B. A lower gear than you use to climb the hill. C. A higher gear than you use to climb the hill. Correct answer is, B. A lower gear than you use to climb the hill. 33. Brake fade, A. Can be caused by the brakes getting very hot. B. Can be corrected by letting up the brakes for one or two seconds and then reapplying them. C. Can be caused by cold weather. Correct answer is, brake failing can be caused by the brakes getting very hot. 34. To help you stay alert while you are driving. You should, a. Take short breaks before you get drowsy. b. Schedule trips for the hours you are normally asleep. c. Keep the cap warm and quiet. Correct answer is, you should take short breaks before you get drowsy. 35. Which of these is true about hours of service? A. You must take a break after every two hours of driving. B. After you put in 1,000 hours of service. You are exempt from regulations. C. You should keep balance. You are of service with enough sleep to keep you alert. Correct answer is, C. You should keep balance. You are of service with enough sleep to keep you alert. 36. Which of these is not true about emergency braking? A. You should brake in a way that will keep your vehicle in a straight line. B. It is not important how you brake in an emergency. C. You should avoid using brakes until your speed is down to 20 miles per hour. Correct answer is, B. It is not important how you create an emergency. 37. In the event of a rear tire failure, uh, dual rear tires. B. May prevent vibration or thumping. C. We will usually prevent fishtailing or it will allow you to brake immediately. Correct answer is, A. The dual rear tires will usually prevent fishtailing. 38. Which of these is the most important thing to remember about emergency braking? A. This connecting the steering axle brakes will keep your vehicle in a straight line. B. If the wheels are skidding. You cannot control your vehicle. C. Never do it without downshifting first. Correct answer is, B. If the wheels are skidding, you cannot control your vehicle. 39. Which of these is not a danger when an automatic transmission is forced into a lower gear at high speeds? A. Damage to the transmission. B. Loss of engine braking effect. C. Loss of steering control. The correct answer is, C. Loss of steering control. 40. Which of these statements about vehicle fires is true? 
A. If a cargo van catches fire, you should open the doors as soon as you can. B. If your engine is on fire, you should open the hood as soon as you can. C. Burning tires should be cooled with water. Correct answer is, C. Burning tires should be cooled with water. 41. Optional safety equipment may include emergency numbers, tire change, and A. Tire changing equipment. B. Reflective triangles. C. Charge the fire extinguisher. Correct answer is A. Tire changing equipment. 42. Which of these is correct about emergency or evasive action? A. Stopping is always the safest thing to do in an emergency. B. In order to turn quickly, you must have a firm grip on the steering wheel. C. You can usually stop more quickly than you can turn to miss an obstacle. Correct answer is, B. In order to turn quickly, you must have a firm grip on the steering wheel. 43. Which of these is not a good rule to follow when caring for the injured in an accident? A. If a qualified person is at the scene, stay out of the way unless asked to help. B. Move severely injured persons if there is a danger due to passing traffic or fire. C. Keep the injured person cool. Correct answer is, C. Keep the injured person cool. 44. Which of these is the proper way to signal to change lanes? A. Signal just as you begin to change lanes and drift over slowly. B. Signal early and change lanes slowly and smoothly. C. Signal before you change lanes and then move over quickly. Correct answer is, B. Signal early and change lanes slowly and smoothly. 45. You should signal continuously while turning because, A. You need both hands on the wheel to turn safely. B. It is illegal to turn off your signal before completing a turn. C. Most vehicles have self-canceling signals. Correct answer is, you need both hands on the wheel to turn safely. 46. A full stop is required at a railroad grade crossing when, a. The nature of the cargo makes a stop mandatory under state or for incompatible items. b. The crossing is located in a city or town with frequent train traffic. c. There are no flagman warning signals or gates at the crossing. Correct answer is, when the nature of the cargo makes a stop mandatory under the state or for incompatible items. 47. What does this marking mean? a. It may be a slow-moving vehicle. b. The vehicle is hauling hazardous material. c. Is being driven by a student driver. Correct answer is, a. It may be a slow-moving vehicle. 48. When you are driving on a snow-packed road, you should reduce your speed by at least 4. B. One third. C. Half. Correct answer is C. Half. 49. If you must cross into the oncoming lane as you make a turn, you should A. Watch for oncoming traffic. B. Back up to allow oncoming traffic to pass. C. Complete your turn without stopping. Correct answer is you should watch for oncoming traffic. 50. What happens to tar in road pavement when it gets extremely hot? A. It becomes gummy, making tires stick to the road. B. It bleeds, making the road surface slippery. C. Nothing. It is made for hot weather. The correct answer is, B. It bleeds, making the road surface slippery. 51. What is the best advice for drivers when a heavy fog occurs? A. Park at the truck stop or rest area until the fog has lifted. B. Do not drive too slowly or other drivers may hit you. C. Alternate your low and high beams to improve your vision. Correct answer is, A. Park at a truck stop or a rest area under the fog has lifted. 52. Strong winds mostly affect driving a. Around sharp curves. b. On open highways. c. Upon exiting tunnels correct answer is, c. Upon exiting the tunnels 53. The road you are traveling on becomes very slippery due to glare ice. Which of these is a good thing to do in such a situation? Stop driving as soon as you can safely do so. 
B. Downshift to stop. C. Keep wearing your speed by accelerating and braking. Correct answer is, you should stop driving as soon as you can safely do so. 54. When driving on roads where truck speed limits are lower than cars, usually, A. Adjust speed to the speed of the other cars. B. Adjust your speed to the speed of the other trucks. C. Use extra caution when changing lanes or passing. Correct answer is, C. You should use extra caution when changing lanes or passing. 55. The distance you should look ahead of your vehicle while driving at low speeds is what distance? A. Half block. B. One block. C. Two blocks. Correct answer is, B. One block. 56. Which of these statements about cold weather driving is true? A. An engine cannot overheat when the weather is very cold. B. Windshield washer and antifreeze should be used. C. Exhaust system leaks are less dangerous in the cold. Correct answer is, B. Windshield washer and antifreeze should be used. 57. Which of these statements about engine overheating is true? A. You should never shut off an overheated engine until it has cooled. B. You should never remove the radiator cap on a pressurized system until it has cooled. C. Antifreeze is not needed when the weather is warm. Correct answer is, B. You should never remove the radiator cap on a pressurized system until it has cooled. 58. Which of these is true about the use of a heater? A. When driving in winter weather, you should check that the heater is working properly. B. You must have at least one extra heater, such as a mirror heater or a bunk heater when driving in winter weather. C. You feel sleepy, warming the cab with the heater will help you stay alert. Correct answer is, when driving in winter weather, you should check that the heater is working properly. 59. What will help keep an engine cool in hot weather? A. Driving faster to force more air into the radiator. B. Running the air conditioner. C. Making sure the engine has the right amount of oil. The correct answer is, C. Making sure that the engine has the right amount of engine oil. 60. Which of the systems should receive extra attention during cold weather inspections? A. Exhaust. B. Suspension. C. Steering. The correct answer is, A. The exhaust. 61. Which of these statements about tires is true? A. Inspect your tires every 2 hours or every 100 miles when driving in hot weather. B. The air pressure of the tire decreases as the temperature of the tire increases. C. If the tires are too hot to touch, let 5 to 10 pounds of air out to cool them. Correct answer is, you should inspect your tires every 2 hours or every 100 miles when driving in hot weather. 62. When driving in cold weather, your tire tread depth should be A. Checked every 100 miles or 2 hours. B. Double the depth required normally. C. Provide enough traction to shear and get through the snow. Correct answer is C. Provides enough traction to shear and get through the snow. 63. You should avoid driving through deep puddles or flowing water, but if you must, which of these steps can help keep your brakes working? A. Apply hard pressure on both the brake pedals and accelerator after coming out of the water. B. Generally putting on the brakes while driving through the water. C. Turning on your brake heaters. Correct answer is, B. Generally puts on the brakes while driving through the water. 64. At dawn or dusk, or in snow, it can be hard to see and be seen. You can let others know that you are there by using your home. B. Turning on the tablet. C. Turning on your lights. Correct answer is C. Turning on your lights. 65. When driving down a mountain, you will have to use a lower gear to drive safely. Which of these does not affect your choice of gear? A. Weight of the load. B. Tire tread depth. C. Length of the grade. Correct answer is, B. Tire tread depth. 66. Which regal will be most affected by strong winds? A. Set of empty doubles. 
b. A bike with two passengers. c. A straight truck with cargo. Correct answer is set of empty doubles. 67. When the roads are slippery, a. You should make turns as gently as possible. b. Stop and test the traction while going uphill. c. Decrease the distance you look ahead of your vehicle. Correct answer is a. Make turns as gently as possible. 68. You are driving on a two-lane road. An oncoming driver drifts into your lane, headed straight for you. Which of these is the most often best action to take? A. Hard braking. B. Steer to the right. C. Steering onto the left shoulder. Correct answer is, B. You should steer to the right. 69. You are driving on a level highway at 50 miles per hour. There are no other vehicles around you. A tire blows out on your vehicle. What should you do first? A. Stay off the brake until the vehicle has slowed down. B. Begin the light braking. C. Begin emergency braking. Correct answer is, stay off the brake until the vehicle has slowed down. 70. You are driving a heavy vehicle with a manual transmission. You have to stop the vehicle on the shoulder while driving on an uphill grade. Which of these is a good rule to follow when putting it back in motion of the grade? A. Keep the clutch slipping while slowly accelerating. B. We use the parking brake to hold the vehicle until the clutch engages. C. Let the vehicle roll backward a few feet before you engage the clutch, but turn the wheel so that the back moves away from the roadway. Correct answer is, B. You should use the parking brake to hold the vehicle until the clutch engages. 71. You see a car approaching from the rear. The next time you check your mirror, the car is gone. You wish to change lanes. You should, A. Wait to change lanes until you are sure the car isn't in your blind spot. B. Assume the car has left the road. C. Change the lanes as normal. Correct answer is, you should wait to change lanes until you are sure that the car isn't in your blind spot. 72. You are driving a heavy vehicle. You must exit a highway using an off-ramp that curves downhill. You should a, slow down to a safe speed before the curve. B. Slow to the posted speed limit for the curve. C. Wait until you are in the curve before downshifting. Correct answer is B. Slow down to a safe speed before the curve. 73. What should you do if a car coming toward you at night keeps its high beams on? A. Flash your high beams as the other driver. B. Look at the right side of the road. C. Slow down and look straight ahead in your lane. Correct answer is, B. You should look at the right side of the road. 74. What should you do before driving in the mountains? A. Know the escape ramp's location on your route. B. Unhook your steering axle brakes. C. Carry tire chains in your vehicle. Correct answer is, you should know the escape ramp's location on your route. 75. What should you do before driving in the mountains? A. Know the escape ramp's location on your route. B. Unhook your steering axle brakes. C. Carry tire chains in your vehicle. Correct answer is, you should know the escape ramp's location on your route. 76. What should you do when you see a hazard in the roadway ahead of you? A. Swirl around it and get back in your lane. B. Stir quickly to pull to the side of the road. C. Use your four-way flashers or brake lights to warn others. Correct answer is, C. You should use your four-way flashers or brake lights to warn others. 77. What should you do when your vehicle hydroplaning is a start? A. Stop braking. B. Release the accelerator. C. Accelerate lightly. Correct answer is, B. You should release the accelerator when your vehicle hydroplanes 78. In bad weather, many cars tailgate large vehicles. What should you do? A. Speed up to distance yourself from the tailgater. B. Increase your following distance so you can avoid quick maneuvers. 
See, slightly tap your brakes to warn the tailgater to back off. Correct answer is B, increase your following distance so you can avoid quick maneuvers. 79. Which of these statements about backing a heavy vehicle is true? A. You should avoid backing whenever you can. B. Helpers should be out of sight and use only voice commands. C. It is safe to back on the right side of the vehicle, then to the driver's side. Correct answer is, you should avoid bagging whenever you can. 80. Which of these is a good thing to do when steering to avoid a crash? A. Apply the brakes while turning. B. Don't turn more than needed to miss whatever is in your way. C. Avoid counter steering. Correct answer is, B. Do not turn more than needed to miss whatever is in your way. 81. Which of these following is a good way to react to an aggressive driver? A. Smoke, a cigarette to relax. B. Change the CD or have a snack. C. Give the driver the benefit of the doubt. Correct answer is, C. You should give the driver the benefit of the doubt. 82. Which of the statements about staying alert to drive is true? A. A half-hour coffee break will do more to overcome fatigue than a half-hour nap. B. If you must stop to take a nap. It should be at a truck stop or a rest area. Never on this side of the road. C. Sleep is the only thing that can overcome fatigue. The correct answer is, C. Sleep is the only thing for you to overcome fatigue. 83. If you must use a cell phone while driving, you should reduce your speed. B. Pull off the road onto a safe and legal position. C. Position the phone so you can drive and see the road in front of you. Correct answer is, B. Pull off the road onto a safe and legal position. 84. If you need to leave the road. In a traffic emergency, you should, A. Avoid braking until your speed has decreased to about 20 miles per hour, B. Tap repeatedly on the brakes. C. Try to get all the views of the pavement. Correct answer is, A. Avoid braking until your speed has decreased to about 20 miles per hour, 85. If you are being tailgate, you should, flash your brake lights. B. Increase your following distance. C. Signal the tailgater when it is safe to pass. Correct answer is, B. You should increase your following distance. 86. Looking ahead of your vehicle while driving, you should look straight ahead at all times. B. To the right side of the road. C. Back and forth, near and far. Correct answer is, C. You should look back and forth, near and far. 87. Is it safe to add coolant to a coolant recovery tank or coolant overflow tank while the engine is at operating temperature? A. Yes, but only if the coolant recovery container is part of the pressurized system. B. No, never. C. Yes, as long as the engine isn't overheated. Correct answer is, C. Yes, as long as the engine isn't overheated. 88. You do not have a hazardous material endorsement on your commercial driver's license. You can drive a vehicle hauling hazardous materials when, A. The GVWR is 26,001 pounds or less. B. The vehicle does not require placards. C. A person who has hazardous materials endorsement wipes with you. Correct answer is, B. The vehicle does not require placards. 89. Which of the statements about the causes of the vehicle fires is true? A. Underinflated tires will not cause a fire. B. Carrying a properly charged fire extinguisher will help prevent a fire. C. Poor trailer ventilation can cause cargo to catch on fire. Correct answer is, C. Poor trailer ventilation can cause cargo to catch fire. 90. Can federal inspectors inspect your truck or bus? A. Yes, but they can't put it out of service. B. Yes. And they can put it out of service if it is unsafe. C. No. Correct answer is, B. The federal inspectors can inspect your trucks or bus, and they and they can put it out of service if it is unsafe. 91. Which of these statements about shipping hazardous material is true? 
A. Red circular hazardous label must be on the package. B. Gas lenders that will not hold a label must be shipped under cover. C. A diamond-shaped hazardous label must be on the package. Correct answer is, C. A diamond-shaped hazardous material label must be on the package. 92. Placards must be, A. Display on all vehicles hauling hazardous materials. B. Placed on only the front and the rear of the vehicle. C. Be placed on all four sides of the vehicle. Correct answer is, C. The placards must be placed on all four sides of the vehicle. 93. If you are not sure what to use to put out hazardous material fires, you should A. Use water. B. Used dirt. C. Wait on qualified firefighters. Correct answer is, C. Wait on qualified firefighters. 94. You do not have the hazardous material endorsement on your CDL. You are asked to haul a load of hazardous material requiring placards. You should a. Refuse to haul the load. B. Haul the load only to a place where a driver with the endorsement can take it over. C. Haul the load and file a report with the DOT. Correct answer is a. Refuse to haul the load. 95. A car cuts in front of you, creating a hazard. Which of these actions should you not take? A. Honk and stay close behind the car. B. Slow down to prevent a crash. C. Signal and change lanes to avoid it. Correct answer is, you should honk and stay close behind the car. 96. You are driving a 40-foot vehicle at 35 miles per hour. What is the least amount of space you should keep between your vehicle and the one in front of you? A. 3 seconds. B. 4 seconds. The correct answer is, B. 4 seconds. 97. What three things add up to the total stopping distance for your truck or a bus? A. Attention. Distance. Reaction distance. Following distance. B. Observation distance. Response distance. Breaking distance. C. Reception distance, reaction distance, and breaking distance. Correct answer is, C. Perception distance, reaction distance, and breaking distance. 98. If you react slower, your chances of a crash can double, A. 1 second. B. Half second. C. 1 fourth second. Correct answer is, B. Half a second. 99. The primary cause of fatal crashes is, A. Driving too fast. B. Driving while eating. C. Driving at night. Correct answer is, driving too fast. 100. You are driving a vehicle at 45 miles per hour on a dry pavement. About how much Toro's stopping distance will you need to bring it to a stop? A. Twice the length of the vehicle. B. Half the length of a football field. C. The length of a football field. Correct answer is, C. The length of a football field. 101. Most serious skids result from turning too sharply. B. Uneven load. C. Driving too fast for the conditions. Correct answer is, C. Driving too fast for the conditions. 102. Which of these statements about marking a stop vehicle is true? A. If a hill or curve keeps others from seeing the vehicle within 500 feet, the rear triangle should be moved back down the road to give adequate warning. B. The vehicle's tail lights should be kept on to warn other drivers. C. You must put your warning devices within 5 minutes. Correct answer is, A. If a hill or a curve keeps other drivers from seeing the vehicle within 500 feet, the rear triangle should be moved back down the road to give adequate warning. 103. The distance you should look ahead of your vehicle while driving is highway speed. Dash of a mile at one third. B. One fourth. C. Half. Correct answer is B. One four. 104. When you are driving on grades, which of these is the best way to choose a safe speed? A. If you have a light load, you can go faster than those with a heavy load. 
B. Based on your vehicle and its cargo, select a safe speed that is within the posted speed limit. C. Follow the vehicle in front of you. Correct answer is, B. Based on your vehicle and its cargo, select the safe speed that is within the posted speed limit. 105. You are driving a vehicle that could be safely driven at 55 miles per hour, but traffic is heavy and moving at 35 miles per hour, even though the limit is 55 miles per hour. What is the safest speed for you? A. 25 miles per hour. B. 35 miles per hour. C.45 MPH. Correct answer is B. 35 miles per hour 106. Whenever you double your speed, how much more distance does it take to stop? A. 2 times the distance. B. 3 times the distance. C. 4 times the distance. Correct answer is C. 4 times the distance. 107. Which of these statements about speed management is true? A. Empty trucks always stop at a shorter distance than loaded ones. B. You should choose a speed that lets you stop at a distance so you can see your head. C. When you double your speed, it will take twice as long to stop. Correct answer is B. You should choose a speed that lets you stop in the distance so that you can see ahead. 108. You are driving through a work zone. You should uh, lower your speed even further any time workers are present. B. Adjust your speed to the speed of other vehicles. C. Increase your speed if no construction is seen. Correct answer is lower your speed even further any time workers are present. 109. When driving through work zones, you should A. Reduce speed only if workers are close to the roadway. B. Stop quickly and pull to the side of the road. C. Use your four-way slash flashers or brake lights to warn others. Correct answer is C. Use your four-way flashers or brake lights to warn others. 110. You must stop on a hill or a car on a divided highway. How far back should you place the rearmost triangle? A. Within 200 feet of the rear of the vehicle. B. Within 500 feet of the rear of the vehicle. C. As far back as necessary to warn others. Correct answer is, C. As far back as necessary to warn others. 111. What is counter-steering? A. Turning the wheel counterclockwise. B. Using the steer axle brakes to prevent oversteering. C. Turning the wheel back in the position of the opposite direction after steering to avoid an emergency. Correct answer is, C. Turning the wheel back in the opposite direction after steering to avoid an emergency. 112. The total weight of the power unit trailer and the cargo is called. A. Gross vehicle weight. B. Gross combination weight. C. The gross axle weight. Correct answer is, B. Gross combination weight. 113. Hydroplaning. A. It only occurs with a lot of water. B. It cannot occur when driving through a puddle. C. Is more likely when tire pressure is low. Correct answer is, C. Hydroplaning is more likely when the tire pressure is low. 114. The best drivers are those who watch and prepare for hazards. This is called being, A. Offensive. B. Defensive. C. Objective. Correct answer is, B. Defensive. 115. Aggressive driving is a, driving a vehicle with the intention to do harm. B. Driving a vehicle in a bold, selfish, pushy manner. C. Driving a vehicle when your full attention is not on driving. Correct answer is B. Driving a vehicle in a bold, selfish, and pushy manner. 116. Which of these statements about cargo is true? A. Unstable loads such as hanging meat or livestock can require extra caution and curves. B. Oversized loads can be hauled without permits during the day. C. When liquids are hauled, the tank needs to be completely full. The true statement is, A. The unstable loads such as hanging meat or livestock can require extra caution in the curves. 117. Where or how is cargo blocking used? A. Loosely around the cargo. 
b. From the upper part of the cargo to the floor. c. In the front, side, and back of cargo usually at a floor. Correct answer is, c. In the front, side, and back of the cargo, usually at the floor. 118. A principle to remember about loading cargo is to keep the load, a. To the front. b. To the rear. c. Balance in the cargo area. Correct answer is, c. Balance in the cargo area. 119. On which firearms can water be used? a. Electrical. b. Gasoline. c. Tires. Correct answer is, c. Tires. 120. Which of these is not a danger of rough acceleration? a. Tire damage. b. Mechanical damage. c. Damage to decoupling. Correct answer is, a. Tire damage. 121. You should try to park so that, you can pull forward when you leave. b. There is at least one curb next to your vehicle. c. Your vehicle is protected by trees or some other overhang. Correct answer is, you can pull forward when you leave. 122. Having ABS on only the tractor will, a. Increase the likelihood of jack knifing. b. Increase the likelihood of a rear wheel skid. c. Give you more control over the vehicle. Correct answer is, c. Give you more control over the vehicle. 123. Overall length, over width, or over weight loads. A. Must be escorted by police. B. We require a special transit permit. C. Can only be driven in daylight. Correct answer is, B. It requires a special transit permit. 124. Containerized loads. A. Should come with their own tie-down devices or logs. B. Are generally used when freight is carried partway by rail or ship. C. Do not require inspection or securing by the driver. Correct answer is B. The containerized loads are generally used when freight is carried partway by rail or ship. 125. What is the proper way to hold a steering wheel? A. With both hands close together at the top of the wheel. B. With both hands close together at the bottom of the wheel. C. With both hands firmly on opposite sides of the wheel. Correct answer is, C, with both hands firmly on the opposite sides of the wheel. 126. Which of these do not provide extra gears on some trucks? A. Automatic transmissions. B. Auxiliary transmissions. C. Multi-speed rear axles. Correct answer is, A. Automatic transmissions. 127. Which of these actions is not recommended for a left turn? A. Use the right lane if there are two turning lanes. B. Start your turn from the center of the intersection. C. Start the inside lane and swing right as you turn. Correct answer is, C. Start the inside lane and swing right as you turn. 128. Why is it important to shift gears correctly? A. To keep control of the vehicle. B. To keep the engine warm. C. To keep the engine oil flowing. Correct answer is, A. To keep control of the vehicle. 129. Merging onto a road is safest if you. A. Inch over to the nearest lane, so that other vehicles will give you room. B. Gain speed on the shoulder and then merge. C. Wait for a large enough gap in traffic to enter the road. Correct answer is C. Wait for a large enough gap in traffic to enter the road. 130. Which of the below is not a characteristic of a front tire failure? A. Steering wheel twisting. B. Vehicle fishtail. C. Difficult steering. Correct answer is B. Vehicle fishtail. 131. Which of these happens when a tire blows out at a high speed? A. Vibrating feeling. B. A hissing sound. C. A rapid drop in speed to less than 20 miles per hour, correct answer is, B. Hissing sound. 132. How do you correct a rear wheel acceleration circuit? A. Apply more power to the wheels. B. Stop accelerating. C. Downshift. Correct answer is, 
b. You stop accelerating to correct a rear wheel's acceleration skip. 133. When confronted by an aggressive driver, the very first thing you should do is a. Make every attempt to get out of his, her way. b. Maintain your position. c. Make a right turn. Correct answer is make every attempt to get out of their way. 134. After starting the engine, a. The coolant temperature gauge should begin a gradual rise to a normal range. b. The oil pressure gauge should 3 to 5 minutes to rise to normal. c. The engine temperature gauge should rise to normal within seconds. Correct answer is a. The coolant temperature gauge should begin a gradual rise to a normal range. 135. Retardants can be used, a. Only for downhill braking. b. Only where permitted by law. c. Only on roads with poor traction. Correct answer is, b. Only where permitted by law. 136. Which of these statements about brakes is true? a. The heavier a vehicle or faster it is moving the more heat the brakes have absorbed to stop it. B. Brake drums cool very quickly when the vehicle is moving very fast. C. Brake fade is not caused by heat. Correct answer is, A. The heavier a vehicle or the faster it is moving the more heat the brakes absorb to stop it. 137. What is the term for a commercial vehicle's habit of swinging wide in a turn? A. Off tracking. B. Wide rounding. Correct answer is, a. Off tracking. 138. Which of the following statements about double clutching and shifting are true? A. Double clutching should only be used with a heavy load. B. Double clutching should not be used when the roll is slippery. C. You can use the tachometer to tell when to shift. Correct answer is, C. You can use a tachometer to tell when to shift. 139. According to the driver's manual. Why should you limit the use of your horn? A. Straddle over drivers. B. On vehicles with air brakes. It can use air pressure that may need it to be stopped. C. You should keep both hands totally gripping the wheel at all times. Correct answer is, A. It can straddle over drivers. 140. How does vehicle weight affect stopping? A. Empty trucks can take longer to stop than loaded ones, but this is usually not the case for buses. b. It doesn't, brakes work the same regardless of the weight of the vehicle. c. Fully loaded trucks take longer to stop than empty trucks. Correct answer is, a. Empty trucks can take longer to stop than the loading ones, but this is usually not the case for buses. 141. Which of these statements about overhead clearance is true? a. You should assume posted clearance signs are correct. b. The weight of the vehicle changes its height. c. If the road surface causes your vehicle to tilt toward objectives at the edge, you should drive near your shoulder. Correct answer is, b. The weight of the vehicle changes its height. 142. Bridge formulas. Permit less maximum axle weight for axles that are closer together. B. Permit less maximum axle weight for axles that are further apart. C. Permit the same axle weight for any axle spacing. Correct answer is, A. Permit less maximum axle weight for axles that are closer together. 143. What is the first thing you should do if your brakes fail while going down the hill? A. Call or radio for help. B. Try to use your parking brake to stop. C. Get off the road as soon as possible. Correct answer is, C. Get off the road as soon as possible. 144. The escape ramps, A. Are not designed for trucks with double trailers. B. Are designed to slow the vehicles so they can get back on the road safely. C. Should be used by any driver who loses braking power. Correct answer is, C. Should be used by any driver who loses the braking power. 145. Which of the following best describes how the sleep debt can be paid off? a. Overcome it with willpower and not sleep aids. b. It will go away by itself over a period of time. c. It can be only paid off by sleeping. Correct answer is, c. It can only be paid off by sleeping.
146. You should use your mirrors to check, a, if your running lights are working properly. b. Blind spots. c. Where the rear of the vehicle is while you make turns. Correct answer is, c. Where the rear of the vehicle is while you make turns. 147. When you are parked at the side of the road, you must, a, hold your emergency triangles within 30 minutes. b. Turn on your four-way flashers to warn others. C. Use your tail lights to give warning to other drivers. Correct answer is, B. Turn on your four-way flashers to warn others. 148. ABS uses sensors and computers to sense, A. Potential wheel lockup. B. Roadway surface conditions. C. Brake conditions. Correct answer is, A. Potential wheel lockup. 149. Which of these is the danger of crossing tracks on a dirt road? A. The ground underneath the tracks may not be stable. B. You could get hung halfway across the tracks. Correct answer is, B. You could get hung halfway across the tracks. 150. If a straight truck goes into a front wheel escape, it will slide sideways and spin out. B. Go straight ahead, even if the wheels are turned. C. Go straight ahead. Return if you turn your wheels. Correct answer is, B. Go straight ahead, even if the wheels are turned.